Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode of the Notebook Photography Hour featuring me, emo depressed Walmart Ryan Gosling. Have you ever created something and then looked back at it with disappointment? Like, maybe you could have done better. Well, you and my parents aren't alone. I recently took this photo as part of an experiment in pushing Ilford Delta 3200. Looking back on it, I kind of feel like it could be a portfolio worthy shot if I just took more time and just got it right. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to discuss some tips, just the tips, for shooting film at night as I return to the spot where I took the original photo, which I'm now starting to realize is a popular teenager smoke drugs and make out spot. Sick. Fast and the Furious, Burbank Drift. <laughs> Shooting film at night is a little tricky if you choose to shoot handheld. So it helps to bring a tripod, a cable shutter release, and most importantly, your game face. I've talked to a few people who don't like carrying around a tripod, but just fucking bring one, dog. It'll make everything way easier, and you won't get any motion blurry shots that look like your vision after you pound seven shots of tequila. Trust me, I'm an encyclopedia of knowledge on both topics. This time around, I'll be shooting with the trusty Mamiya 7. I shot with the Pentax 6x7 last time, which has a huge mirror in it that slaps up and slaps down whenever you take a picture. And it's pretty loud, which I'm sure the neighbors thought was just some heavy artillery fire. The reason I even mentioned something like that is because a huge mirror like that uh, might cause some camera shake if you're not fully locked down. Most cameras don't have this issue or at least have mirror lockup, so you can probably just ignore everything I just said like usual. Be sure to use the cable shutter release so you don't accidentally shake the camera when you press the shutter. If your camera isn't compatible with cable shutter releases, then I guess you're f***ed. I'm just kidding. Look for a self timer option on your camera that you can set to take a photo two or three seconds after you press the shutter. I would recommend staying away from any film that's below 100 ISO, instead going for some film that's in the 800 ISO range. Kodak Portra 800 and Cinestill 800T are very popular options for night photography. I'll be using Cinestill for my shot. Uh, not everyone is a huge fan of Cinestill 800T because the film imprints these orange blobs around the highlights of your image that are called halations. I happen to think that they're pretty cool, so I'm with Cinestill till the tragic end. I'm Cinestill's ride or die bitch. Yeah, I highly recommend bringing a handheld light meter. They're more accurate than the light meter on your phone, and uh, it just kind of makes you look like you know what you're doing. You may get called a nerd by onlooking bystanders, but you'll show them in the end when you post your perfectly exposed photo to Instagram and you get 12 likes instead of the usual four. If you don't have a handheld light meter, this is the light meter that I use on my phone. I'm not sure if it has a name other than the highly creative, totally original, light meter free. What should you meter for at night? This is a hotly debated issue in the community and I'm the only one with the right answer. The answer is, it's up to you as the photographer. Night scenes are generally pretty high contrast so I try to meter for any midtones I can find. If you can't find any midtones, uh, usually I'll just meter for the shadows and go two stops darker. I think it's a bad. Not a fan. I do one stop overexposed. 
if I'm at half of a second, so now I'll do one second. If you're unsure about the exposure, but the composition is cake, then take another shot, expose one stop brighter, or hell, even two stops brighter. Change that. Two seconds. Is this two stops overexposed? The same can be done in reverse too, so take another shot one stop darker. But uh, be warned, if you're shooting medium format and you're bracketing every shot, uh, this can actually eat up your roll pretty quick. Okay, I'm gonna do one stop underexposed. So that'll be one fourth of a second. When all is said and done, just pick the best exposure that fits your original vision. Or if you're like me and don't have any creative vision left, just pick the least ugliest one. Okay, these next two tips are optional, but you better f***ing do them anyway. Consider shooting at f8 or f11. I picked this tip up from the god of night photography himself, Willem Verbeek, because it's actually a really solid suggestion. Alright, this one's going to be at f11. So f11 means 4 seconds. Every lens is different for sure, but shooting around f8 is typically the sharpest for your lens. Plus more of your shot is in focus compared to shooting wide open, if that's something you care about. Highlights in your shot will also tend to burst up in sort of like a star-like pattern, which adds some nice texture to your shot. If you want to add some flair to your otherwise boring ass photo, consider using a ProMist diffusion filter. For night shots, they essentially glow out the highlights a bit and make everything a bit more atmospheric. And then of course the very important lens hood at night. I've been using the Tiffin Black ProMist at one half, but that's a bit strong for my taste, so I think I'm gonna cut it down in the future to a quarter. So we're gonna be shooting this one with a uh, one quarter diffusion filter. A bonus from diffusion filters, if you're shooting Cinestill, is that the diffusion filter will actually glow out any halations that might appear and kind of cancel them out a little bit. These shots were all taken with Cinestill 800T and with the Tiffin Black Pro Mist at one half. And as you can see, there isn't really an excessive amount of halation. Anyway, this is the take that I went with, uh, and I'm pretty happy with it. So, in the end, if you're anything like me and you're up at night already, fighting crime on the streets of LA dressed as Shrek, you may as well give night photography a go and see if it's your thing. I guess what I'm saying is, don't be surprised if you're getting mugged and you hear a sound at the end of a dark alley that you're in. Standing at the end of the alley is a dark silhouetted figure. It's massive and has antennas. Oh my god, it's Shrek. You smell the faint smell of shit. It's the mugger. He shit his pants. Shrek starts charging down the alley yelling his battle cry and the mugger takes off fearing for his life. So yeah, hopefully some of these tips helped you because night photography is really fun and worry not. If you're getting mugged in a dark alley one night, I got you. I mean, Shrek's got you. Hey yo, what's up? Uh, are you sad that the video's over? Me too, but I have some good news for you. If you're in the mood for some more film photography content, I was recently on the Analog Talk podcast uh, hosted by Chris and Tim. It's a podcast where they talk about everything film related. So, so if you're interested in hearing about my take on film photography and my channel, then uh, I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, whatever happens, happens. I'll see you guys on the next video, which will be in two weeks. <laughs>